Hi, I'm Steve Saylor, I'm blind, and if you're wondering how I'm able to play video games if I'm blind, if you take a look at the video here, and if the link is not there, click the link in the description down below to be able to see exactly what I see when I'm playing video games. Today I'm going to be taking a look at Assassin's Creed Valhalla. I had a very lengthy time with playing a six hour demo of the game, and it was a preview build which I got to see a large chunk of what was going to be available in the game, so I'm going to be able to talk about that and including what accessibility impressions that I was able to sort of gleam from the gameplay that I had. This one is no match for you, young elf. I'm the greatest of flighters, a master of verse. Your pride is appalling and your rhyming is worse. Got you there, young earth. <laughs> First off though, I want to be able to say that the demo that I played unfortunately didn't have any accessibility options available other than the ability to be able to turn subtitles on and off. I kept them on for obvious reasons, but we did receive a list of accessibility options that will be available in the final version of the game. The kind of sort of like a TLDR, TLDW, too long didn't watch uh, scenario of the game. I like the game. It's pretty much exactly what you would expect from if you played Origins and Odyssey. Uh, it has the same kind of RPG, new style element of Assassin's Creed gameplay that uh, we've gotten to know and love over the past two games uh, with some quality of life improvements and some different tweaks here and there uh, to this sort of gameplay style, including stuff like settlements and being able to sort of take over different territories of early England. And there's a lot of different stuff there that will definitely entice people uh, to want to be able to play Valhalla if they're interested in sort of the Viking uh, world and being able to become a Viking assassin, as it were. As far as accessibility, the way I've been able to just kind of describe how Assassin's Creed Valhalla is, is pretty much is a two steps forward, one step back scenario. So I'll talk about the things I didn't like in a little bit, but first off, the things I did like uh, is kind of actually there's an improvement or will be an improvement for blind players uh, being able to play this game. Um, things I wasn't able to see in the demo, but uh, will be available day one is that there's gonna be menu narration pretty much throughout the entire menu. The HUD and UI of the actual gameplay won't be narrated but all the menus will be there's the ability to be able to increase the font size in the menus there's also the ability to be able to increase the font size of the subtitles as they had in previous games there's also a lot of audio cues for certain aspects of the game like you can be able to hear where uh, a chest is or some kind of a special item that's nearby Sometimes when you even hover over some items in the map, it kind of will give an audio cue to let you know what type of gameplay that you'll be doing, whether it's a raid or whether it's a fort or whether you're looking at an artifact or uh, sort of kind of world events. Other quality of life improvements for blind players is the, like I said, menu font size. You can even increase the icon size in the HUD and in menus. You can actually be able to set which HUD uh, elements will be on the screen. Um, you can set even a background for each of those HUD elements. So there are definitely a lot of really neat improvements for, uh, for blind players. Uh, as far as motor disabilities, there's the ability to be able to remap pretty much all the controls. You can also adjust the sensitivity of the thumbsticks, or you can even actually swap the thumbsticks if you per, uh, if it makes it a little bit easier. Another cool little feature that I noticed that for the quick time events, which was something that uh, I haven't really seen in any other games. Now you have the general hold or but, uh, rapidly button press for something like a quick time event, but there actually is the ability to be able to kind of do a one time press uh, within that quick time event uh, instead, which is kind of great. So you don't have to hold uh, a button, but what's great too, is that if you do have to hold a button and there are many times where you in the game where you do have to, you can actually be able to adjust the length of how long you have to push that button for. So if you need a little bit extra time to push and hold a button, or you only want a little bit of time just to kind of make it a little bit easier uh, and less sort of uh, a stress on your uh, fingers to be able to kind of push a button, then this is going to be great. As far as deaf and hard of hearings, you're now going to get what is pretty much now the standard subtitles uh, for Ubisoft games in that you have a lot of options there uh, that you'll be able to adjust, obviously background, uh, subtitle size, you're going to obviously add a speaker tag. There's also going to be closed captions for certain sound elements elements in the game, which is going to be really great, especially if you're going to be using uh, Odin Sight uh, or just kind of anything that's that has a sound element uh, that you don't sort of see on screen with a visual element. There's also the ability to be able to adjust a lot more of the audio options. You can be able to actually add a dialogue boost if you find that uh, the dialogue isn't as loud enough uh, across the, the music or the sound effects. 
There's also the ability to be able to adjust the music frequency and uh, in post launch, they're actually gonna be adding ambient sound, uh, which will be able to kind of adjust the ambient uh, sounds that are around you. Another additional improvement that they made was the addition of guaranteed assassination. It was a feature that was in the previous games before Origins, because that you would try to be able to assassinate someone in Origins and Odyssey, where, but if you were up against a high level target, it would only sort of like uh, take down a large chunk of their health bar and you still do a, keep attacking them in order to be able to kind of eventually kill them or assassinate them but in this you basically like you you take like you take your hidden blade and you can sort of attack them to uh, with uh in the neck that person's dead and uh it's so it's something that honestly like they they created a barrier by removing the guaranteed assassination in origins and odyssey and then they kind of added the guaranteed assassination to kind of fix the barrier that they caused so those are just some of the accessibility options that will be available the final version of the game if you want to be able to get a full list of what is available you can go to can i play that.com right now and there's a blog post that actually has the list of what will be available in the final version. Um, but as far as stuff that I saw in the demo that, yes, no, granted, there is there was no accessibility options I can be able to adjust and kind of try this out for myself, but there were certain things that kind of were taken away from the previous games, or at least some of the things that just kind of were a little bit difficult for me to be able to play uh, that I feel is sort of the, uh, what I, like I said at the beginning, the two steps forward, one step back of uh, Valhalla. Um, one of the biggest problems I actually had was with Odin's sight. Now, yes, there's audio cues and it actually highlights the enemies also that are around you. It also helps you when you're in kind of like a, a building or a fort or encampment and you want to be able to tag all the enemies that are around you. Um, but unfortunately, it doesn't really reach far enough around the area that you're in. So there's many times where I would tag an enemy and it has like a nice sort of like highlighted red uh, around each of the enemies that stays even after the Odin's site uh, disappears, um, which is great. But when I want to be able to stealthily kind of move around, if the Odin site only goes so far and I'm in a large fort, I'm going to have to constantly be pushing the Odin site just to be able to see if I can be able to tag everybody. Because what I would do in previous games is I would use my eagle to kind of fly around uh, the, like we'll just use a fort as an example, and you're able to fly around a fort and you can tag all of the enemies that are in there and it will constantly highlight them, the ones that you've tagged, so that I could be able to actually plan out my strategy on how to be able to enter in that fort stealthily so I can actually be able to try to sort of have a personal goal for myself to try to get through the entire fort without anybody seeing me, which is what I feel an assassin would do or would be able to do is to kind of like just sneakily kind of get into a fort and before anyone notices that, they're, that, that anyone's there, the assassins come and gone. And I love that aspect of the game, but with this, it's gonna be really difficult because when you use your Raven, you can't tag enemies anymore. You can tag them one at a time, but that's it. And I, and I actually kind of want to call out Ubisoft for this because there was one developer that said that they removed it because it felt like it was a push button to win feature. Honestly, I, I don't, like, I am uh, totally against that sort of attitude of, an, of, a, of a setting or a feature because I've said it before, all settings uh, are, are accessibility settings because it just, any setting allows you to be able to customize your play experience that works best for you. And if you start taking away settings because you think it's a cheat or you think it's sort of a, 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 a what makes the game less challenging, in a way, you're taking away an accessibility option that would have benefited a player. And it actually would have benefited me. It did benefit me in Origins and Odyssey. And I love that aspect. That's one of the things I loved about being able to go into a, a scenario is because I can, I, can, I can slowly plan out my attack of how I want to be able to complete this one section of the mission without sort of being caught and bombarded by a bunch of different uh, like uh, soldiers that are attacking me. And then I have to die multiple times because I couldn't get past one section because I couldn't find that one person that called me out. And I get it that that's the challenge of the game. But for me, I really loved that that small little feature. Another aspect of the Raven that I also was found it difficult was the it, when you sort of are near an objective for your next quest step. You can use your uh, Raven to be able to kind of see where that area of the objective is, but instead of it being able to tag that w as a waypoint where that objective is in that area, it just kind of does this green sort of radius uh, circle around an area. So when you go there, you are ne you never know how to be able to get in that section. So especially if there's someone inside a building or underneath the building, you're like, I'm constantly getting lost trying to be able to, wait, how the heck do I even 
get in there to even talk to this guy. Like it, it happened several times and it just made me frustrated and lost majority of the time. And I kept having to be able to push the Raven site over and over again. And my hands actually kind of got fatigued because I'm constantly having to be able to push that button over and over again. Now I have the back button compatibility controller, uh, which basically takes away the L3 button, which, which the Odin site is, de is defaulted to the L3 button. And I have the back controller, so it's more of a paddle than a push of the button. But if, I'm, if I didn't have that, and I had to push that thumbstick over and over and over and over again, just to be able to try to find where I need to go, that's gonna give me a lot of like finger fatigue. And I'm not going to be able to play as long as I would want to and be immersed in that world. Another disappointment that I found with accessibility was in regards to when you're in the middle of combat and it's the ability to kind of like see enemies. In the previous games, when you're kind of around an enemy, it will kind of automatically highlight uh, the enemy that you're around. So that way you can be able to like contrast wise, be able to point out where that enemy is at any given point so that you are not sort of surprised by an attack from that enemy. In this, unfortunately, the only way to really do that is you have to lock on to each enemy every single time. And the only contrast you see is the little health bar above their heads. And even then you have to kind of hover your cursor or your reticle on that person so that you can be able to know that an enemy is there. There were several times that I kind of got jumped from like from different areas that I didn't expect. And it was just a little bit too overwhelming, especially when you're kind of in a raid or a siege where there's a lot happening around you. Now there is a lot of sort of like visual elements for sounds that uh, definitely can uh, can benefit, uh, and it's something I can be able to kind of quickly uh, take a glance at to sort of see to know that I'm, if I'm being ambushed or not. But when you're kind of in the heat of battle or the heat of combat for myself, sometimes I'm like I get so tunnel vision with just the kind of trying to be able to focus on what I'm trying to do. A lot of that kind of visualization kind of goes away, and it becomes a, co a huge cognitive load to try to keep all that in mind. So a lot of times I'm having to die and then kind of know, like remember where each of the people were so that I know what to expect them and when to expect them. And so I can be able to kind of get through the combat. Now, this isn't sort of anything that's different than any other previous accessory game itself. It's just that in the previous games, being able to sort of like, like, in a way tag an enemy or have an enemy that's highlighted with either like a level above their heads or something like that. Like it would have been nice to be able to kind of have that visual feature in there. Uh, and it just unfortunately just didn't really have that ha happen for me. So in conclusion, I know it was a little bit harsh there on accessibility near, at the end there, but in reality, there is a lot of improvements that have been made. Uh, to be honest, like I said before, it's sort of a two steps forward, one step back in regards to accessibility. This is gonna be an improvement for blind players, for deaf and hard hearing players, for with those with motor disabilities. Um, and honestly, you have to think about kind of how far we've come. Going back to the very first Assassin's Creed game, and I've said this many times before, it didn't even have subtitles. So to see how far we've come in the franchise, in regards to how much accessibility is built into the game now, I have to applaud Ubisoft for pushing that accessibility forward and want to be able to include in the game. And I and I applaud. I think this is going to be a really great uh, entry into the franchise, but also a really great uh, entry and and uh, standard for accessibility. Kind of keep moving forward. That's the thing. What Ubisoft does it, or is doing with the uh, with their games is that they're constantly adding more accessibility options and tools. That basically each game that they come out, regardless of what franchise it is in, there is constant improvement that is being made. So in comparison, is this is Valhalla more accessible than Odyssey and Origins? Yes. There are, are are there some things that are missing from uh, from Origins and Odyssey that I would love to be able to see still in the game? Yes. So would I recommend buying Valhalla for its accessibility? Yes, 100%. There's a lot of care that the developers put in into making sure that it was accessible to as many disabled players as possible. Uh, so I, I definitely would recommend this is a great entry into the franchise and an improvement for accessibility. And it kind of pushes some of the accessibility in the industry forward, which I'm really do appreciate. And who knows, maybe some of the things that I mentioned here will be addressed in a future patch or a future update. Uh, and I hope so. I hope that's the case because I would love to be able to remove some more barriers for uh, for disabled players and including ones for myself. So I would love to be able to see that. Who knows? But I would definitely recommend buying this game when it comes out 100%. 
So that's it for me. If you have any questions or comments, uh, you can be able to leave a comment down below in the YouTube, or if you wanna be able to hit me up on Twitter, at Steve Saylor, and ask me there, I can be able to answer as best as possible. I know I didn't cover everything of what I played, because six hours is a lot of time to cover. But <laughs> if you have any specific questions, I'll try to answer as best as I can. Uh, if you like this video, click the like button. If you wanna be able to see more of my videos, click the subscribe button. If you want to be able to be notified when new videos come out, hit the bell notification icon. Thank you so much for watching. As always, I remain obedient to yours. Bye.